Scheduled meeting of the Rockland City Council for August 26th of 2024. This time I'd like to ask everybody to please stand and observe a moment of silence. Uh, thank you very much. Here. 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 Okay, we have a quorum today. Uh, so with that said, um, I'd like to first of all say welcome back to Peter Barnum today. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing I'd like to say in, in general announcements to say is our RC Clark's Park died. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if I've been a little slicker, a little better prepared, we'd have a birthday cake. Uh, 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 maybe it would make our highlights list. I don't know. But, uh, uh, with that said, that brings us to item number four of our agenda, which is consideration of the minutes of the regular schedule of the City Council meeting, which was held on May 13th of 2024. And also June 10th of 2024, and also the minutes of the regular, regular rescheduled committee of the whole meeting, which was held on May 13th of 2024. Uh, right um, so, uh, with that, I would like a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Councilman Harris and TJ Walker. Uh, is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, this time I'd like to see if there are any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda. I understand that there is at least one addition, and that is um, to add 705 Powell Drive to our code enforcement list uh, as an item for discussion. Um, is there anything else that we need to add? Yes, sir, Councilman Walker. Yes, well, yeah, just for clarification, I uh, wanted to make sure and clarify that it's not on our demo list, uh, but we can direct staff to prepare us a redevelopment plan for redevelopment of the project. Do we want to add that as a specific item for discussion, or do you feel like you have communicated sufficiently? Uh, we can add it for discussion, but uh, if anybody has any angst about it, uh, <laughs> we can add it for discussion. I, I think we're fine. Okay. And does anybody have any need for desire to discuss that? But we'll add it to the agenda if we do. Otherwise, we'll just direct staff to, to please proceed forward. Okay. Seeing none, we'll just, Peter, if you would just uh, follow for that. Thank you. The other item is um, uh, we're going to celebrate, we're going to make an announcement on the agenda today to celebrate one of our uh, lovely residents and citizens here at the City of Rocky Mountain. Uh, is there anything else that we need to add or perhaps subtract? Uh, there is a request that we remove item uh, 12, which is consideration of contract refuses. Um, the elimination of that item is really related to what the contract amount is. There was some uh, late um, moment uh, add-ons to that, increasing the amount, and management just would like to have the exact number before we bring that up for discussion. So if there's, though as opposed to that, we will strike item 12 uh, for this week and add it to the next agenda. Anything else? Okay, hearing none. This time what I'll do is I will turn the meeting over to, oh, no, I won't. What I'll do is I will ask Mother Essie Dancy if she'll please come forward. <laughs> I get to do as mayor is celebrate folks who've made tremendous contributions to our city and our community. And you, let, you here, lady, have had a hundred years worth of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, this time I'll uh, bring slide number six, and I would like to turn the meeting over to our interim city manager, Peter F. Barney, who I believe probably, you know, again, if I had been thinking and a little bit more resourceful, I would have played Hotel California, a place where you can uh, check in, but you can never leave. So, with that, I'll turn check out, but you can never leave. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, day or night. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, four things to update you on. One of them is that the City of Rocky Mountain recently received the Government Finance Officers Association's Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for Fiscal Year 2023. The Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. The report was judged by an impartial panel and met the high standards of the program which includes demonstrating a constructive spirit of full disclosure to clearly communicate our financial story. Uh, congratulations to our finance department and to the city for this award, so appreciate that. The sixth annual local playwright stage reading series will take place at the Imperial Center Theater this weekend, uh, August 29, 30, and 31 at 7.30 p.m. each of those nights. All of the works are written by authors from Nash, Edgecombe, or Wake counties and are performed by local actors. Uh, Thursday the 29th will feature a full-length play, The Buto Project, by Dennis not oversharing by Catherine Borden. On Saturday the 31st from uh, 4 to 8, the fourth annual End of Summer Celebration Go-Go Festival will take place at the Martin Luther King Park, Martin Luther King Jr. Park, uh, this year is the all citizen input. This is an opportunity to express views and concerns to the Rocky Mountain City Council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer matters to the city manager or staff or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will be given three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. And an organized group is present to speak on a common issue. Please designate one person to present the group's comments. If your comments in regard to an item that is a subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to, uh, introduced to speak.
Time will also be monitored. If your card comments in regard to an Everett Street hearing, additional time may be granted. If the City Council requests you please adhere to the following guidelines, complete a sign-in sheet, address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak on the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated. You'll be asked to sit down or removed from the meeting and keep comments to three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Gloria Davis to the podium. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Gloria Davis. And to my fellow citizens all around me and before me, I give honor to a fallen citizen, Mr. Robert Davis, who has stood here before this council member uh, chamber on many occasions advocating for improvement in the city of Rocky Mountain. Mr. Davis is not physically in our presence, but in our hearts and spirits. Mr. Davis labored tirelessly to improve his beloved Meadowbrook community in the city of Rocky Mountain. When Mr. Davis became president of Meadowbrook Community Watch approximately 20 years ago, he requested a name change to Meadowbrook Community Improvement Association. The Meadowbrook Park is just one of the things that I'll mention tonight that is visibly seen as an improvement. The citizens can go and enjoy, and this, this is because of Mr. Davis's vision and persistence. I ask for continued support from the city and citizens to continue his contributed work legacy. Thank all of you that sent your enduring condolences for his homegoing. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Teresa Austin Stokes to the party. Good afternoon, everyone. And again, um, I too would like to say a, a special memory of Mr. Robert Davis, as you recall. He worked until the end. Um, he was last seen in the city council chamber fighting for what he believed in, and I hope that we can put something in place to honor his memory for his years of work to the citizens of Rocky Mountain. Um, good afternoon. I want to just take a minute to welcome again Mr. Peter Varney as our interim city manager. Um, his experience and dedication will be invaluable as we tackle the challenges ahead. We have much work to do, and it's important that we focus on what's best for this entire city. So let's work together for positive growth and change for all of Rocky Mountain, even the least of these. And by the way, uh, before leaving, I had requested before, and hopefully we can get this information, um, the citizens would like to know where is the money that Representative Shelley Willingham um, allocated for housing, over $4 million for housing on the Edgecombe County side? Um, is it possible that we can get an update on where that money um, is and make sure it's just used for the purpose for which it was attended? As city council members, um, let's continue that we're here not to self-serve, but to serve the citizens. And remember, um, our city is better when we're working together. So let's continue to grow in a positive manner and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite uh, Butch Jancy to the podium. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Varney, for willingness, your willingness to serve. Transparency. The people need transparency as it relates to the performance of Keith Rogers. He should not have been anyway. Rogers not only fired Arnie Jones, a sanitation worker, but humiliated him in the Rocky Mount Telegram because he was his boss. I found that I found out that a law was changed and Rogers could do that. Now I want his bosses, you, the entire council, to keep the same energy and let the people know how he performed during his time as the people's unresponsiveness uh, city manager. He never responded to me, so I'm a witness to this unresponsiveness. Since one of the councilmen ran his campaign on transparency 
and he is in the chosen position, y'all know what position I'm talking about, at the moment. He ought to be the one to give the people the full report. I just had a flashback. Keith Rogers, famous words were, he will bring back the full report. I'll wait. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Nathalie uh, Reed to the party. Good afternoon, mayors. Good afternoon. Hi, Mr. Peter Barney. Welcome back. And to our city council and those present. I'm here today because I am getting old. And even though I'm getting old, it seems like there's more things for me to do this year than there were last year. And on top of getting old, uh, my husband developed some medical conditions where we've been um, going back and forth to the doctor. And in the process of me taking care of him, going to Duplin County to have my family reunion, and coming back and just trying to pull myself together, guess what? My lights were turned off. No applause. And this is the third time I've had a property where the lights were disconnected. And the first two times, I went over to, across the street and I asked them <clears throat> to um, develop a more um, consumer-friendly procedure for term cutting off people's lights. Um, if you're in the house um, and you're going to send a good-looking um gentleman over there to cut them off, let him ring the doorbell or knock on the door or do something. First of all, make sure you're alive in the house. Um, could he give you a one-hour window to run across town, pay the bill, or, you know, put a red tag on your front door a week before you turn your lights out or something to help us old folk navigate or remember to turn our lights to pay a light bill. Now, and this may sound a little strange, but as I went within one hour to turn to um, pay the bill, there was a little old white lady walking in there on a rollator with her health care professional, you know, her health care assistant, coming in because her lights had been turned off. Do you understand? This is old, she was older than me. And there were several other people that had some concerns about how they're being mistreated by the utilities department. So my lights may have been turned out, but my light came on. I said, I'm coming down here and made it known to you all that we have uh, something's going wrong. I mean, like if I'm paying these reconnect fees to pad somebody's payroll in the utility department, let me know. But other than that, please um, implement some consumer-friendly procedures for um, turning the lights out. Um, something um, you can do. Oh, my phone's not working because my internet provider changed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Avery. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'll recognize the counselor. Uh, don't we have some procedures around that process? <laughs> Uh, we we used to, and I feel feel certainly should have now. What we used to do in times past was to call people uh, to let them know that they were in arrears in their utility. Call on a telephone, say that they were in arrears and uh, they're subject to being cut off. But to come on in and pay the bill. I don't know if we're still doing that or not. I can find it out. Okay, uh, moving on to number, item number eight, which is consent agenda. I'm looking for a motion to, <laughs> well, let me get it out, please, but, I, but I, I'm recording to, uh, to approve the temporary street closure of thought ordinances and resolutions as written, approve electric service amendments, authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute contracts on behalf of the city, and award a rebid as recommended, and authorize the purchasing division to issue purchase order and execute bid documents in accordance with the council award. I have a motion from Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second from Councilman Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. 
I bring to item number nine on the agenda, which is a public hearing relative to the following land development code amendments recommended for approval and found in compliance with the conference plan by the planning board. Uh, this will be amending the City of Rock Mountain Land Development Code, Chapter 7, Section 709, Signs, and Chapter 11, Section 1104, Non-Conforming Signs. And so, uh, Ms. Bingston, if you would give us uh, an update of where we are, uh, then I'll open the floor to receive public comments. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council and Mayor. The proposed text amendment before you includes two changes. The first is that it eliminates an expired amortization period for non-conforming signs. In 2016, as part of a broader effort to update the city's sign regulations, the city established that all existing signs that did not currently meet the standards would need to be removed or brought to compliance within three years by 2019. At that time, um, a campaign to make uh, impacted property owners aware of that change was not initiated. Um, so today, there are still signs erected and displayed that do not comply with the city's land development code. So the proposed change eliminates that amortization period, that three-year period, um, and would allow non-conforming signs to remain um, in place provided that they are not enlarged, they're not significantly damaged, relocated, or a hazard in their current condition. The proposed amendment also proposes to improve visibility of businesses along I-95 and the US-64 corridor by allowing freestanding signs to be taller than currently allowed. The proposed text amendment states that for non-residential properties within 300 feet of a controlled access interstate or freeway, which is I-95 or US-64 in our case, that the maximum height, <coughs> excuse me, that the maximum height for a sign placed along the lot line closest to the controlled access highway be up to 32 feet in height. And the next slide shows uh, a map of the impacted properties. There are non-residential properties that are highlighted in red where a freestanding sign on the lot closest to the um, controlled access highway would be allowed to be 32 feet in height. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from council? Okay. Hearing on scene none at this time, I'd like to invite any member of the public who wishes to speak to this particular matter. Please come forward. Is there any member here of the public who wishes to speak uh, as it relates to amending the city of the Rocky Mountain Land Development Code, Chapter 7, Section 709, and Chapter 11, Section 1104? I'd like to invite you to please come forward and speak. All right, hearing none, I'll, I'll receive a motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Motion, motion made by Councilman Dodger, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for further discussion? I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, Councilman? Did you have any um, citizens to respond by email or regular mail in? Um, none, not in support of this? Have you had any kind of feedback? We haven't taken any calls of residents that are not supportive of this request. There is a property owner um, near the uh, 64 interchange that is interested in this particular amendment. Um, the property owner is, um, their business is Davenport Auto, and they currently have a sign that was impacted um, by, the, by the regulation that would require the signs to be removed if um, they were not in compliance. That sign is currently 30 feet tall. Um, so this change would uh, positively impact that particular business. Uh, one more comment. Um, just before your time, I remember Honey Hill had that um, sign painted on a um, trailer and um, had a lot of discussions about it. But this would sort of um, <coughs> be less restricted now with this amendment. Is that correct? And non-conforming signs would be allowed to remain in place, assuming that they're not changed. So if, if this amendment is adopted, they would not be required to remove them if they're non-conforming. They would only be required to make them compliant if they made changes to them. Um, 
I want to get the list right. Okay. So this Same. sign has been in place since the text amendment was approved, uh, but they just haven't removed the sign, correct? That's right, and most have not, um, because there was not a campaign to uh, notify impacted property owners and to, and to get those signs removed. Um, and so most of those signs, um, we probably, potentially not any, um, at the time were, were brought down to, to comply with that amortization period. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a motion and a second. Any need for discussion? Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those like sign. Motion passes. Item 10 is consideration of resolution authorizing an upset bid process for property owned by the city at 227 Dunn Street for 7350. Uh, the requested action is that we adopt a resolution authorizing an upset bid process, which authorizes the city court to advertise the offer for upset bids pursuant to General Statute 160A-269. And if no qualifying upset bid is received, resolution includes restrictions that will be written into the deed that ensure the property is developed in a way that provides for affordable housing. Uh, with that, I would like to entertain a motion. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Knight and Councilman Harris. Is there a need for further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Uh, item 11 is consideration of resolution authorizing an interfund of the loan in the amount of $4 million from the electric fund and $1.85 million from the gas fund for the construction and replacement of the Old Mill Road pump station and consideration of fiscal year 2024-2025 budget ordinance amendment appropriating $4 million from the electric fund and $1.85 from the gas fund to the sewer fund for interfund loans. The annual interest rate that we'll be paying is 4% on a 10-year period for repayment to the electric and gas funds. They will receive $1,257,408 in interest payments from the sewer fund. Um, the request here is that we adopt this resolution and the ordinance. And I'll, see, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for that. So move. Motion second. Second. Councilman Joyner, and that was a second by Councilman Harris. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Item carries. Item 12, if you recall, we've uh, moved until the next meeting to make sure we have the exact numbers that we're talking about. Item 13 is consideration of re a resolution authorizing a lease agreement with Passup Dar, doing business as Yava Group, Inc., for city-owned property at 207 East Thomas Street. It's a five-year lease with an automatic renewal for one successive term of five. Annual rent is $42,000. The renewed lease will increase rent 5% to $44,100 annually. The initial term will begin August 26, 2024, um, and will end August 26, 2029. The renewal term will be August 26, 2029 through August 25, really, I guess, of 2034. The lease was advertised pursuant to General Statute 160A-272. At this point, um, uh, the recommended action is that we postpone until September 9th City Council meeting to allow further review. Is there a motion for that? Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Item has been moved, postponed until September 9th. This time, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into closed session for personnel matters. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Knight, second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, we are now in closed session. <laughs> right, Councilman, I think it would be easier if we had this in the committee. Right? <laughs> so they're saying if there's so many feet tall, they can have them. And I think that of course is thirty. Now, they have been ruled for ending the sign that's right that tall. Oh, 
I'll call you if I got questions because the first thing came to mind is a little bookies.